an Iranian asylum seeker has arrived in New Zealand after being held on Manus Island for more than six years. The award-winning author, Behrouz Bashani, was sent to Papua New Guinea after fleeing Iran in 2013. He hopes to settle in the United States after his one-month New Zealand visa expires. He was greeted by the Christchurch mayor as he touched down at the airport, being presented with a traditional necklace. This is Greenstone's yeah, Ponamu, um, the waters of Ponamu. So yeah. it comes from the waters and it comes from our heart. Uh, we are so honoured and privileged to have you here. Uh, we thank the Word Festival uh, for bringing you here uh, and for us to know that this is the first place where your voice will be heard telling your story. Uh, it's an incredible honour and a privilege. For more on this, joining us live is Elaine Pearson. She's the Australian Director at Human Rights Watch. Elaine, this came as a bit of a surprise, this uh, arrival in New Zealand last night. What are his options now? What will actually happen next month after that one-month visa in New Zealand expires? Well, it's a bit unclear. Um, Beruz was found to be a refugee and he was accepted for US resettlement. So it is possible that he could simply go from New Zealand uh, to the United States as planned. Um, or potentially he may claim asylum now that he's in New Zealand. Um, there is an established track record of, of that. Uh, another um, refugee who went to Geneva to accept a human rights award successfully claimed asylum in Switzerland um, some time ago. So I think, you know, it's really up to Beruz and probably the US and New Zealand governments to determine what his next options are. Elaine, is it likely that Australian officials would have had to approve his exit from PNG or, or would Australia have been in the dark about this until it did hit the press last night? There are claims, of course, uh, around that Australia does exert a lot of influence over PNG's immigration department. Well, they do, but, um, you know, I think it, it's a bit unclear, actually, whether the Australian government officials know or not. Um, but, you know, ultimately, the Australian government should be doing everything it can to get everyone out of PNG. I mean, people have been there now for six and a half years. They're in very bad shape, and I think Beirut has done a tremendous job during that time. Um, but, you know, now is not the time for the US government to be dragging its feet on the resettlement options. You know, I think particularly since there was the move of the men from Manus Island to Port Moresby, the fact that some of them are now being transferred into community uh, accommodation. There's a lot of uncertainty and I think that's not very good, um, you know, certainly for, for the mental health of people who've already suffered a lot over the last six years. Well, I know Beres has said that he was getting sick and tired of waiting essentially for that US deal to come off in his own personal circumstances and, and he's taken matters obviously into his own hands in the meantime. But what message does that send to people smugglers, uh, to people who might be considering jumping on boats if they see people like Beres turning up in New Zealand, uh, getting there on, on his own volition apparently, they start seeing people starting new lives elsewhere. Could that sort of results spark more boat arrivals as the government has been warning about for some time now? No, I don't think Beruz's arrival in New Zealand will send that signal at all. I mean, Beruz is really a very unique case. I mean, he's someone who has won literary awards for his books. He's been offered opportunities, um, professorships at you know, certain universities. He's been invited to many literary festivals all around the world. Um, and in this case, he just accepted you know, one of those options to, to go to New Zealand. So I don't think this is really about sending a broader message, uh, but I think the broader message, you know, really is that, you know, despite having, you know, the medevac laws since earlier this year, the boats haven't restarted again. And, you know, the Australian government likes to engage in a scaremongering campaign um, repeatedly, but, you know, it should be looking for options. And I think it really needs to reconsider New Zealand as an option for those refugees who aren't able to go to the United States because PNG really doesn't provide any long-term security or, or future for them. Of course, the government would argue it's human rights groups like yours, Elaine Pearson, that it, that's doing the scaremongering when it comes to some of these issues. We know that there are, and you'll, I'm sure, correct me if I'm wrong, more than 500 people now, I believe, still in PNG and Nauru. You've been expressing concern uh, this week for, and, and in recent months, of course, for some 47 men being held in PNG's banana. You uh, allege that they're being treated like criminals. How so? Because these people... They're people who have had their requests for asylum rejected, aren't they? 
They are people who've had their asylum claims um, rejected, but they are being held in conditions worse than prison. They have no access to lawyers, they have no access to communicate with family members back home. They're given very small, meagre rations for, for their meals. Many of the men have lost a lot of weight. Um, and some of these men are, are really in bad shape physically and, and mentally. So we're certainly calling on the PNG government to release these men from arbitrary detention. And I think an important point about these men is that... they do have the option to be released, don't they, in terms of being sent home? That's the, the option that they're being offered at the moment, is that if, because their asylum's been rejected, yes, if, they're not found to be refugees, so that they're being offered to, to go home. If they agree to voluntarily go home, then they can be released. And so that has happened in a handful of cases. Um, but, you know, clearly it's coercing people by putting them in these extremely cruel conditions. And what we should remember is that a number of these men, most of them are Iranian, and many of them uh, withdrew their asylum applications from PNG um, after the night that Reza Barati was brutally beaten to death. Uh, one of the men that is in there is in fact the witness uh, to that murder. So it's quite understandable actually that a lot of these men did not see a future for themselves in PNG, and that's why they withdrew their asylum claims. Just finally, on another matter, we saw the Australian retiree Chao Van Kham sentenced to 12 years for terrorism this week uh, in Vietnam. What are his options now? Is it likely we will see the Australian government increase pressure on Vietnam? Where to now for, for him? Well, Chao Van Cham has um, 15 days to make an appeal against that decision, and he should make an appeal. I think there was no evidence presented in that trial, which just lasted a few hours and sentenced him on terrorism activities. There was no evidence presented of any violent activity whatsoever. And I think it's really important that right now the Australian government really up the pressure on the Vietnamese government. Uh, so far, we haven't seen any strong statements from Maurice Payne or from Scott Morrison on this case. And that's in stark contrast to other Australians who are unjustly imprisoned in other parts of the world. If you think about the case of the Australian writer in China who's currently detained, or indeed the position that was taken over the case of Hakim Al-Arabi. So I think it's really important that the Australian government has a consistent principled position and that it calls for the release um, of this person who's been sentenced to 12 years really on very scanty evidence and really because the, the Vietnamese government um, takes an intense dislike to the organisation Viet Thanh that he was associated with. But they're certainly not a terrorist organisation. We'll watch that space closely. Elaine Pearson, appreciate you joining us with your insights this afternoon. Thank you.